Joe Biden just dropped out of the 2024 presidential race. And this comes just one week after an attempt on former President Donald Trump's life in Pennsylvania. Now, normally election years are crazy in itself, but these series of events have been nothing like I've seen before. And I can only think more things are to come in the days ahead. So in this video, we're gonna read Joe Biden's letter, see who he is going to endorse, and also see what the Bible has to say on what we should be doing in this time. Welcome back to Live Now from Fox, and we have some breaking news as President Joe Biden has just announced that he is dropping out of the 2024 presidential race. This happening just moments ago. You are taking a look at the letter that he has just issued, and we are going to read it in its entirety. It says, my fellow Americans, over the past three and a half years, we have made great progress as a nation. Today, America has the strongest economy in the world. We've made historic investments in rebuilding our nation, in lowering prescription drug costs for seniors, and in expanding affordable health care to a record number of Americans. We provided critically needed care to a million veterans exposed to toxic substances, passed the first gun safety law in 30 years, appointed the first African-American woman to the Supreme Court, and passed the most significant climate legislation in the history of the world. America has never been better positioned to lead than we are today. Now, I don't know if he was the one to write this or who wrote it, but I cannot agree that we've made great progress that we have the strongest economy in the world, or even that we've never been in a better position to lead than we are today. It goes on to say, quote, I know none of this could have been done without you, the American people. Together, we overcame a once in a century pandemic and the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. We've protected and preserved our democracy and we've revitalized and strengthened our alliances around the world. It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as your president. And while it had been my intention to seek reelection, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. I will speak to the nation later this week in more detail about my decision. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude to all those who have worked so hard to see me reelected. I want to thank Vice President Kamala Harris for being an extraordinary partner in all this work. And let me express my heartfelt appreciation to the American people for the faith and trust you have placed in me. I believe today what I have always, that there is nothing America can't do when we do it together. We just have to remember we are the United States of America. The letter signed Joe Biden. Now lately all eyes have been on Trump and with the assassination attempt failing, I believe that Donald Trump is in a great position to win this year. So it's looking like the Democratic Party realizes that Joe Biden is not the guy to beat him and they're going to put somebody else as the face to possibly win. So Joe Biden said on Instagram, my fellow Democrats, I have decided not to accept the nomination and to, and to focus all my energies on my duty as president for the remainder of the term. My very first decision as the party nominee in 2020 was to pick Kamala Harris as my vice president, and it's been the best decision I've made. Today, I want to offer my full support and endorsement for Kamala to be the nominee of our party this year. Democrats, it's time to come together and beat Trump. Let's do this. And so Joe Biden, or maybe not Joe Biden, whoever's pulling the strings is endorsing Kamala Harris, which is interesting because in the last four years, it seems like they've had some bumps in the road. So it's hard for me to believe that this was from Joe Biden. But there are rumors that it might be Hillary Clinton or somebody else. And it says it's time to come together and beat Trump. And so that wording to me is really awkward especially after just a week ago, there was a target on his back. And instead of the focus being on let's make America stronger than ever and get the best person in office, it seems like the purpose is just to beat Trump. So enough of my opinion. What does the Bible have to say about this? I want to remind us of three things. The first one out of 1 Timothy chapter 2, 
It says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority, so that you can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. And so out of the scripture, we are realizing that God wants everybody to be saved. Whether it's Donald Trump and people in the Republican Party, whether it's Hillary Clinton or Kamala Harris or Joe Biden in the Democratic Party, all in America, all in Sudan, all across the world, that is God's heart. And it says here, first of all, to pray for all people, to ask God to help them, to pray for your leaders, for kings and all in authority. So we are called to pray for our leaders of this nation. We are called to pray for those running. And that's never going to stop. No matter who is in office, we honor the position and we do what God has called us to do, which is pray. For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man, Jesus Christ. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone, for everyone, all parties. This is the message God gave the world, not just the United States, but the world at just the right time. And I have been chosen as a preacher and apostle to teach the Gentiles this message about faith and truth. I'm not exaggerating, just telling the truth. And so my first reminder is God has called you to pray. Called you to not sit back and not just be entertained throughout your day, but to pray for our leaders. Scripture number two, let me remind you to pray for the peace of Israel. In Psalm 122.6, pray for peace in Jerusalem. May all who love this city prosper. God wants us to pray for his people. God wants us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and they are in a war. So my number two is pray for the peace of Jerusalem today. And number three, let me remind you what the Bible says people are going to be like in the last days. In 2 Timothy 3, it says, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. I think we could all agree that we are in difficult times in this world and in our nation. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. So it's clear that we are living in those last days. That everything that the Holy Spirit is, the opposite is being manifested in the world today. There's no love, there's no joy, there's no peace, there's no patience or kindness or goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, or self-control. People are scoffing at God, and they love pleasure rather than God. Now with that being said, I wanted to show this picture as an illustration to what God has called you to be. Most of us know the Chosen series, and their logo are these fish, and the world is angry and bitter, puffed up with pride, lovers of themselves. But don't let that detour you from being Christ-like, from showing love, from loving your neighbor and imitating God, therefore, in everything that you do. Yes, we are in hard times. Yes, we are experiencing things that I never thought I would see in my lifetime. And so I want to encourage you guys in the faith today. Don't stop praying. Don't stop asking God to help our leaders, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And don't let anybody or anything change who you are called to be, a son and daughter of Jesus Christ here on this earth for the very purpose that was brought up, to lead people to Christ and to show them through your life that he is alive, that he is active, and he came to save sinners all across the world just like you and me. Oh.